Hey guys and welcome back to another book review and I am so excited for today's book review because I have been trying to get my hands on this book for I don't even know what month this came out so months now because this is Caitlin Patrick Burke's new book and this is We Live Inside Your Eyes and I love Caitlin Patrick Burke. I have a ton of I don't know a ton of a handful of book reviews on my channel about his books. Every book I read by him is just so unique and different and I've enjoyed every single one I've ever read by him. And this is actually a collection of short stories which he does short stories and short novellas so well. He really knows how to play with length. Um, he doesn't make them too long or too short. They're just like the right amount to get you freaked out I guess you know what I'm saying like he just knows how to keep it the correct length which I think a lot of people struggle with when they're doing um short stories and stuff like this but he just knows how to nail it so this is we live inside your eyes and I am so excited that I finally got my hands on this um I've been waiting to buy it forever and I was so annoyed because I just really wanted to get my hands on it anyways I love his covers. He has the soft matte touch covers. Also, it looks so distressed, which I love. Actually, I thought I had bent it. <laughs> it came out of the box and I was like, oh my God. And then I was like, oh, that's just how it looks. But, um, you know, we have a nice skull on the front and we have nice colors that draw your eye to it, which he does really well. I love his covers. They're always really cool. So let's read the back it says in the ruins of an old parking garage there is an effigy lashed to a pillar to anyone else the remains of the woman with the goat skull head is a warning to a lonely young boy looking for an escape it is a god of salvation at its feet lay tattered old notebooks scattered stories tales of strange encounters of broken people and monstrous things and of corrupt hearts and evil minds in order to complete his transfiguration the boy must read these stories but he has no idea the fate that awaits him and then on the back it has this nice little writing that says all hail the sunflower god this book review is going to be quite short because each short story is very short i mean not very for like two pages but not many pages and i tried really hard to give you a synopsis of each story without giving too much away which is very difficult when anything you say could give a lot away so what i'm gonna say about these short stories is very generic <laughs> and it's just to give you a brief 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 look into the story because honestly I can't tell you a lot <laughs> I really can't without giving you the whole short story and I really don't want to do that on my channel I'm not one to spoil things I try really hard not to tell you things that don't need to be said so with that being said um these are going to be very quick descriptions um a lot of it's just going to be me telling you um like briefly what it's about and if i liked it or not um spoiler alert i liked all of them enough chit chat let's get into the details or lack thereof details in this case the book begins with the title we live inside your eyes and this is about charlie who is a young boy who spends his time wishing he was somewhere else he kind of looks out a window and watches this little girl across the street and one day he gets the courage to go and talk to this little girl and this little girl brings him to an abandoned parking garage in this parking garage is an effigy of a woman with a skull on her head so she's like tied up to a pillar and the little girl tells charlie that to be blessed by the bone mother he must read the notebooks that are scattered at her feet and inside are stories that will help him become anew the first short story is called the land of sunshine and this is about a man and his marriage and how this marriage is quite rocky and they're having some issues and he feels like something is missing 
and during the night he goes on a search for this missing thing that he doesn't really know what it is he just feels it so he goes looking for it again that's all i'm going to say this one was actually really interesting i had really no idea what was happening until the very end but i still thought it was really good i liked being kept in the dark if you will i had no idea what to expect especially since it was the first story and i was kind of like oh so this is how it's gonna be okay the next story is called the traveler and this is about a man who is getting revenge on the person who murdered his wife however the murderer isn't quite what he expects and that's all i'm going to say this was also a very interesting story i it a lot of his stories in this one um this isn't a bad thing but they they were very weird in a good way but the endings were very like Oh, left you a little confused and a little freaked out, which is good. This story is called The Mannequin Challenge, and this one is my absolute favorite of the entire short stories. This is about a man named Theo who really keeps to himself and doesn't really interact with other people, and he decides to go to his company Halloween party. But when he gets there, everyone's acting strange <laughs> again i don't know how to explain it without giving everything away so that's all i'm going to say this one was so good though um when i finished it i was shocked <laughs> i guess that's all i can say again i'm trying really hard not to give anything away but um this one left me very without words basically go warily after dark is the next one and this is about a family whose city is getting bombed and they take shelter in their basement but something isn't quite right with their basement <laughs> i know very generic i'm sorry that's all i can tell you but uh again really good very interesting very different which i love the next story is called down here with us and the only way I could think of summarizing this one was brotherly love, a hand garden, and a monster. <laughs> That's all you get, so. The next one is called Sanctuary, and this is again one of my favorites. And this is about a boy named Liam who is told by his mother to go retrieve his father from the bar which he does not want to do because that means he has to leave his room, which is his sanctuary. And he knows that when he goes to get his father, he won't like what he finds. Again, all I can say, it was so good. Again, not what I expected at all, but in the best way possible, which I feel like a lot of these stories were, they weren't what I expected, but they were still so Good. The next one is called A Wicked Thirst, and this is about a man who has an unquenchable thirst for alcohol and will do anything to get some. <laughs> Again, really good story. Not what I expected at all when I started it, but was so, so, so good. The next one is called The No One, and this is actually a rhyme, and uh, it's very short. It's just a page. But it's, it's really interesting and I liked that it was more of a poem and uh, he's never done that before, at least from what I've read and I thought it was really, really cool. The next one is called You Have Nothing to Fear From Me and this one is again one of my absolute favorites. This is about a woman named Amantha who matches with a handsome man on a dating site and their date is something she'll never forget. <laughs> It feels so silly telling you guys these like one lion things, but it's really all I can say. And that one was so good. Again, one of the best ones I read. So, so good. The next one is called The Monster Under the Bed. And this is about a boy who asks his dad to check under his bed for a monster. And the dad is met with a surprise. Again, a really, really, really good one. Something very unexpected. Something I had no idea what was coming 
really, really good. The next one is called The House on Abigail Lane, and this is actually the longest one. I'm pretty sure this is a novella, if I'm correct. Let me see. Yes, it's a novella. And this one is about a house that people mysteriously vanish in. This is the last story that the child is reading in the We Live Inside Your Eyes story. So after this one, uh, We Live Inside Your Eyes part two comes and the story is finished. Again, not gonna tell you a lot because I would ruin things. These stories are all so different from each other, but yet all make sense. They all fit, if that makes sense. They're all different, but they all fit together and it's all very intriguing. They're all very different from stuff that I've read from him previously, but in a very good way. Keelan Patrick Burke really knows how to write horror. This is why he's one of my favorite horror writers that I've found so far. He writes horror so differently from other people and I appreciate that because reading so much horror, they all run together, honestly. I have found very few authors that stand out in a crowd to me, and he is one of them. He just knows how to write horror. It's, it's in his blood. It's just part of him. He's just so good at it. His stories always leave me with this funny pit in my stomach. And I know that sounds bad, but I mean it in like a good way it leaves me with this pit because of the way it ends it's so like ugh, like gripping you know what i mean it's so creepy it's so freaky it's so startling that it leaves me feeling like that which i like because i like feeling freaked out from horror i mean i don't know what else to say he knocked it out of the park once again it was such a good collection of short stories and I've read some really bad short stories before and this one's just so good. I honestly would recommend any Keelan Patrick Burke book, even the ones I haven't read. I know they're good. He's just one of those authors that I can expect the very best from him and I know that he'll deliver and I this is no different. This I would recommend to you guys, especially if you like Keelan Patrick Burke and you've read other stuff from him, you will like this. It's so him it's so his style it's so his vibe if you will i know it sounds weird but it just is it's just him and this was just so good and i'm so glad i finally got my hands on it i need to get all his books honestly i'm so behind i haven't gotten them all but there's only so many books i can buy at a time and only so much money i have so you know but he's just one of those authors that i want every single book that he he has out. It's just, he's really, really good. That's pretty much all I have to say. I know this is a very weird video. Honestly, there's not a lot I can say without giving so much away. I don't want to give a lot away. I try really hard not to give you guys too much information that isn't necessary to the book. And with short stories like this, it's just very hard not to spoil things. So I'm trying my very best, but I think you guys would know if you want to read it based off of what I tell you. So I hope this video isn't pointless. Um, I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless. Please let me know in the comments down below if you've read this book, if you like Keelan Patrick Burke, um, if you want me to review any of his other books. Um, I obviously have others by him. You can check out the book review. <laughs> a uh, playlist I have. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please give me a like, subscribe to my channel, and I hope I see you guys in my next video. Bye!